time I'm in this, here in this prayer group, I realized how intimate our love affair has to be with God. And I said to my wife this morning, I'm repenting. And you know what? God knows my heart. He knows what I'm repenting from and what I'm going to do. And it's because of how much God really loves you and I, brothers and sisters. By faith in Christ alone. And I played that song by that guy, Andrew, yesterday. And, and Jay said to me, man, what beautiful songs. Well, the word of God is beautiful. The word of God, his love affair with us is beyond what we could even imagine. And, and this verse uh, one in, in chapter seven, I'm just going to read this chapter the way it's written. You can go wherever you want, but this is his, his intimate love affair as a man and a woman. And we have that spiritual love affair because he's the bridegroom to each and every one of us. And that's because the, the fellowship is when we're fellowshipping in the spirit. And Jesus said, you worship me in spirit and truth. That's what God says. So contrary to the word of God, we need to be tuned up by God's word. It's more precious than silver or gold. It doesn't return void. So he, the, the love affair starts here this morning. Beautiful are thy feet with shoes, O prince's daughter. Exclamation mark. There's nothing greater than the two becoming one in the spirit, loving one another, telling each other you love them. Well, it's the same thing with God, brothers and sisters. We, we stand before him. We bring him our problems. We ask for his grace and mercy that's new every day. It's a whole different relationship when you hear God's word and you put it into action. It says, the joints of thy thighs are like jewels, the work of the hands of a cunning workman. The navel is like a round goblet, which wanteth not liquor. And I found that interesting. See, because I used to drink a little bit prior to getting born again and delivered. But after studying all the scriptures in the Bible, I even put the wine out of the program because it's just the devil tempts. And if you're weak, you're going to fall into temptation. You know how many Christians I know that backslide and go back to alcohol? Just like the ones that can't get off of cigarettes or drugs. It's, it's, it's a spiritual battle. Once you you win the battle in the spirit, whom the Lord sets free is free indeed. Here, we got a brother in, pray for Bryce every day. You know, that's what I do. I can't beat him up. He's got to be in the prayer group. He gets deliverance every week now. You're going to see what happens when people that were addicted to something for a long time get set free. They're going to be a different person in the end. Thy Amen. navel is like a round goblet, which wanted not liquor. The belly is like a heap of wheat set about with lilies. And, and you know, the lilies of the valley. And I told you the other day, it makes us think about everything you look at. When you're out there in nature, when you're on a lake, when you're fishing, wherever you, God puts you, he created it all. And that's who wants to have a love affair with us. Creator King, he died for you and I. The least we could do is read the book and, and try to tell other people about him. That's all he wants. We're his arms extended. We're part of his great commission. Our names are written in his book. We've been redeemed. You know, I don't know how many redeemed shirts I still got up in the room, but if someone wants them and I got the size, you can have one, you know? Because that's part of being, acknowledging Christ in all your ways. Don't be ashamed 
that you're a Christian. Don't be afraid that the enemy operating in the United States right now wants to kill Christians. Because to be absent from the body, we're going to, this is not our home. I can't preach it enough. I could be gone. My wife could be gone any time now. We both hit three score and 10. Can't take nothing with us. You've heard all of us preach this year. It's really changing me a lot because I'm preaching to myself all the time too. You know, thy two breasts are like two young rows that are twins. You know, the gazelles, the deer, you know, it's not what you think when you're reading this. That's why commentaries are good. Thy neck is as a tower of ivory. Thine eyes like the fish pools in Hezbon, but the gate of Barabbam. Thy nose is the tower of Lebanon, which looketh toward Damascus. See, God's got a whole picture here. And it's 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 about our relationship with him and his creation and everything we see. Because in, in all honesty, none of us would be here if God didn't create us. And he knew us in the womb. That really moved me because I watched someone rebuke what the left is saying with the word of God yesterday. It's God that knew us in the womb, not a politician. And killing babies is murder, people. All you got to do is read the Bible. You want God's opinion? That's God's opinion. And if, if, you, if you enable people to be in a position, it's on you. And you're going to stand before God. You know, because God... Godly people don't kill babies. You know, demonized people kill babies. And when they get saved, they repent. And a lot of them, a lot of them at an older age, I've seen them adopt children to give back. Why? Because it doesn't keep you out of heaven if you confess your sins. He's faithful. You know, and I never know where I'm going to go. I don't free write a sermon on a chapter i'm being led by the spirit of god here i'm not even watching the board i made randy and a couple of people there co-hosts and if someone tries to come in and i don't see it, it's not my problem thine head upon thee is like carmel and the hair of thine head like purple and it's not all these people with purple hair and pink and everything else they're doing green the king is held in the galleries how fair and how pleasant art thou O love for delight and you know as i was reading this i was saying man he's loving he's kind and he's always forgiving and, and we all have issues forgiving people that hurt us. Sometimes we get upset with God because we don't think he's fair, you know, because we're, we're trying to get things, prayers answered and everything else. Sometimes you just got to be diligent and keep on knocking. Maybe God's doing something within us to get us leaning in the right direction. Maybe we don't spend enough time having communication with our Savior, you know? And I looked at this this morning. How fair and how pleasant are thou, O love, for delights? This is the stature is like to a palm tree. And thy breasts, and he went back to the breast, the clusters of grapes, you know? And I had the wrong opinion. Years ago, when I was reading this chapter, and it was only because of what I've been reading that it really changed my heart this morning again. Because I didn't write commentaries. Uh, I'm learning from other people right now. You guys are fellowshipping with me, 
and you're trusting in that I did my little bit of homework. But the reality is, it's all about God's love for each and every one of us. He's no respecter of people. And when he said in verse 8, I will go up to the palm tree, I will take hold of the bows thereof. Now, also thy breast shall be as clusters of the vine. So it's not the, the, the intimacy because it's clusters of the vine. So it's our spiritual walk. That's the way I took it today because we're part of the vine. And apart from him, we can do nothing. In him, we can do all things. Those are the things that echo in my spiritual heart that God wants us all to pay attention to. He says, and the, and, and, and the smell of thy nose like apples. My wife, we went to a farm yesterday and I got fresh apples my wife got, not me. I got to tell you, one of the best apples I ever ate when I was outside mowing yesterday. And when I read this this morning, I said, look at this. You know, why? Because I took the time to go for a ride with my wife. I In, in the morning now, I asked her, what can I do? Or what, what are we going to do today? Because that's the same way you have to have a relationship with your Savior, brothers and sisters. Husbands and wives are supposed to be in love with one another. Believers are supposed to be in love with God. Jesus Christ is our bridegroom. So you have a love affair where? In the spirit. And 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 I, I really got crazy with this because he got me up at 3:30 this morning and I was praying for people. And I'm serious. How many times do you really get up and pray for other people? That's called binding and loosening, intercessory prayer. And he says, and the roof of thy mouth, like the best wine for my beloved that goeth down su sweetly causing the lips of those that are asleep to speak when i read that this morning i said thank you lord jesus for waking me up thank you for ministering to me in the secret place thank you for showing me where i need to repent and put more faith into the word of god that's what happened to me this morning and then i'm reading it he didn't give me this flavor until I, I got out of bed. I went down, did everything I was supposed to do. And I came back up and I sat here. And verse 10, I am my beloved's. Well, how many times do you thank him for saving you? That you're in a relationship with God. It's beyond all of us people. Because humans tend to disagree, even husbands and wives. But how can you disagree with God, brothers and sisters? If the word of God is truth. And God says, don't lean on your own understanding. Trust me with all your heart. Well, those are some strong words. That's how the Spirit speaks to us when we're walking, when we get up every day and say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the breath. Thank you that I can get up and go serve you somewhere, somehow. Let the my mouth meditate on the word of God. Like you, you want to have living water flowing so other people can see that there's something more important than the things of the world. It's a relationship with like I said yesterday, to a stranger, two strangers the other day, if you died right now, where would you go? They didn't have the right answer, people. So there's a harvest everywhere out here, you know? So I pray for people that call themselves Christians, zeal and boldness. God says to us this morning, come, my beloved, let us go forth into the field. Let us lodge in the villages. So that's that's a great calling right there. If you love God, go out there and represent him 
acknowledge him in all your ways. And all the villages that could be in the cities, that could be in the suburbs, that could be whatever house you knock on a door. I mean, it goes real. Because honestly, in a Zoom room, I don't really know anybody here. I only know the picture that is spoken. But in the book that I'm reading, I get to understand how God works wants me to love people the way he loves people the way he loves you and i and sometimes we got to be gentle sometimes we have to have tough love but he says come you know he said in 10 he goes i am my beloved in other words he's the answer to our, every one of our desires and his desire is what toward me listen to what solomon was speaking here his relationship, his love affair, he had to pay attention. And it says here in 12 and 13 in closing today, I, I highlighted uh, a, a, a 10, 12, and 13. Let us get up early to the vineyards. Let us see if the vine flourish, whether the tender grape appear, that's the fruit, you will know them by their fruit. The Palmer Gates spoke about that yesterday. They will bud because when you bear fruit, people will see it. If you're if you're being a servant of the Most High God, if you if you're being part of His royal priesthood, I keep preaching it to all of you. These signs follow them that believe. But we first got to get those beams and planks out of our own eyes so that we can see clearly, brothers and sisters. There will I give thee my loves. See, all the love that God wants to illustrate through us, he'll make it happen, brothers and sisters. You know, all you got to do is not lean on your own thoughts sometimes and read the Bible and start becoming a doer of God's word. The mandrakes gave a smell and our gates are all a matter of pleasant fruits, new and old, which I have laid up for thee, O oh my beloved. In other words, God's in control. Proverbs 3, 5, relax, God's in control. You don't have to worry. You just got to get in God's order. And sometimes you got to let God be the chiropractor in our spiritual walk. Maybe there's some things, spiritually speaking, you're not doing. And if you're not really studying the word of God, you're not going to do the things God wants us to do. And, and I'll go to two places here today, again, with commentary real quick. He admires all of us. You know, when I was looking at Thomas Nelson this morning, and I'm not hiding anything from anybody. If you don't have a, a good uh, commentary, there's plenty of them out there. And there's plenty for free if you got a smartphone or a computer. Once more, the beloved tells his wife how attracted she is to him. But when we trust and obey God, you don't think the bridegroom loves us and God makes a way, people. This reminds us, as husbands and wives, we need to express their love to each other. What do you think? It's from me studying the commentaries all these years. You can ask my wife. Every day I look at her and I say, I love you, baby. She's my wife. And all you got to do is tell your spouse. Who else do you got to tell? Jesus. Falling in love with Jesus is the best thing I ever did. Is the best thing you ever did. This reminds us that we need to express to one another and to God often. And our joy is in the Lord. Because we know the truth and the truth sets us free. We know we have eternal life. That's a promise by the creator king, brothers and sisters. In that alone, people should be joyful knowing that they're redeemed. 
And the Bible says, let the redeemed say so. Perhaps we would use different similes today, but each of these descriptions was meaningful in the day. And another commentator said, I ask you, Lord Jesus, to develop me, your lover, in an unmeasurable urge toward you. And that means that you're going to acknowledge him in all your ways, brothers and sisters. Listen to this little, this affection that is unbounded, a longing that is unrestrained, a fever that throws discretion to the winds, exclamation, because that, that's what happens when we're out there acknowledging Jesus Christ to the lost. There's a ray, a hope of glory that we're serving Almighty God, and we're his servants. You have to look at yourself as being a servant of the Most High God because he bought you with his blood. The Word of God says we have victory in him, and no weapon formed against us will prosper. There is no one more blessed than he who dies because he loves so much. No creature can love God too much. And, and I say that with a, a very kind heart this morning. Because it ended with the loving feet in this read today. But let me give you some other scriptures coming out of this book. We do not usually think of feet as an attractive part of the body. This was the beginning of the read, the first verse today in the Song of Solomon. But our Lord wants us to have beautiful feet, spiritually speaking, and sh and shed, or shod, <laughs> not shed, my, my eyeglasses and my eyes, it's early in the morning. Our feet should be clean. And use the example of John 13, verses 1 to 11, where Jesus became a servant to his disciples. And Shad, Luke 15, 22, and Ephesians 6, 15, and busy carrying the good news of salvation. That's acknowledging him wherever he puts our feet. Isaiah 52, 7, Romans 10, 15. Defiled feet and disobedient feet will grieve God's heart and make it, make it difficult for him to have fellowship with us as God desires, brothers and sisters. Why? Because he desires us. That's why he created us. He created us to have this relationship with him in the spirit. What incredible love that he should want to share his life with sinners such as we are. First John chapter three, you know, I don't know what to tell people. You can read that whole chapter, the first 10 verses, and there's an improvement over in chapter 2, verse 16, chapter. I, I mean, the word of God comforts us. The more I read God's word, the happier I am that I've been redeemed. That God had to take my hardened heart years ago and make me into a child of God, a servant of God, and teach me to love the way he loves unconditionally, brothers and sisters. These are times when he invites you, and he enjoys it when you invite him back. So I looked at the other commentary this morning, and it's short. It's so short. In the first nine verses of chapter seven, the bridegroom tells of his delight in us, his bride. The old preacher Ironside, Harry A. Ironside, made a comment. It is a wonderful thing to know that the Lord has far more delight in his people than we ourselves have ever had in him. That's pretty powerful. 
that got my attention this morning. And then I asked God to forgive me. I went downstairs and I said something to my wife. I'm going to really do what the word of God says in a couple of areas of my own life right now. And God appreciates us when we repent. But as the, the bride listens to the groom, there's an expression of love. Her heart is assured that there's a sense of your heart, my heart, are assured that we have restoration and fellowship. You know, when the scripture said 710, I am my beloved's and his desire is toward me, twice before we've heard the bride say, my beloved is mine and I am his. But Moody wrote, draw our attention to the fact that he is an expression of a far greater fullness. Although it implies the outgoing of a desire from the heart of Christ, it expressively in the believers knows that it's God's strength and God's desire, says the Lord. The thoughts that I think toward you, thoughts of good and not of evil, the Lord who thinks them knows them but toward whom they are brought into ignorant or doubtful or unbelieving regarding them. And most blessed are the souls that can respond that we have known and believed in the love that God had for us. And I go back to what I said in the very beginning this morning, brothers and sisters. He loved us in the womb. That's what the word of God says. So we were a little personal with God before we came out of the, the mother's womb. And God did not create us to be fruitful and multiply and kill little babies that he knew us when we were little babies. Understand how deep this goes when you study the word of God. And That's where I, I got flagged with the Holy Spirit this morning, speaking what I'm speaking. I didn't know how the ending was going to come until just now. And it came out of my heart because tomorrow, the commentary, that's all it had in the seventh chapter in this other commentary, what I just shared with you. So I pray somebody gets touched by what God is saying to all of us you know, and, and I hope and pray that we don't lean on our own understanding, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And, and that's how I'm going to close this today. And to God be the glory and amen.